Hi, and welcome to Sonic Odyssey, the music channel dedicated to bringing you the uh, last five decades of music in a variety of genres, and uh, hopefully some of them will appeal to you. The whole purpose of Sonic Odyssey as a channel and as a journey is to explore sound, uh, sounds that have had meaning not only in my life, but in the lives of people that I know, and uh, maybe some of it's been popular, some of it might not be uh, as well known. Um, that's part of the idea here. This is not really a review for the hot new album uh, kind of a setup. Sonic Odyssey is here to deliver past and present great uh, musical selections so you can have maybe some new doors opened up for you sonically. Um, before we begin diving into today's music, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all things Sonic Odyssey. And liking uh, the video helps other people uh, notice it, you know, pushes it up those uh, charts in the YouTube uh, machine. Also, you can feel free to visit our Patreon page. Um, I do this ad-free on YouTube because I make use of music and I uh, don't really have an interest in clickbait ad revenue. So uh, I don't receive any money from YouTube, but I do receive money from uh, gracious and generous people my viewers, uh, who donate through the Patreon campaign, the link for which is in the show description below. So please take a look at the Patreon page. Maybe you'll find that there's a tier suitable to your economic standing. Today I said was going to be kind of special. It is for me. I'm discussing a band that's been around since the uh, early 1980s. Uh, they released their first album in 1981, and uh, this band is from Japan. They're called Loudness. So before we uh, get into discussing the album, which is their 16th studio album released in 2001, uh, we are going to give a brief listen to the track You Stepped on a Mine, or You Stepped on a Mine, to be precise. Um, so here you go. Stepped on a Mine comes bursting out of the gates with bass and rhythm guitar in unison with a brutal assault punctuated by snapping drums and, and the eventual vocal introduction of Minura Niyahara. Overall, the rhythm sounds, the rhythm guitar sounds on Pandemonium are uh, darker in tone and texture than on, uh, say, a Def Leppard album or a Judas Priest album, or even a Saxon album, for that matter. Uh, here, the uh, in this album, more so than anything else that uh, Loudness has done, uh, they really went for a lower end sonically um, to bring out um, the, the bass and the guitar in kind of a dark dance of synchronicity. It's 
pr it presents a really unique sonic stage. And uh, to give a little bit more about some of the other tracks, uh, the second track is called uh, Bloody Doom, and it keeps this aforementioned uh, guitar, bass, rhythm section going really tight. The lead guitar work in it is really spectacular, diverse, depending on what's called for in the piece of music, but uh, really quite diverse uh, guitar leads. The title track, Pandemonium, uh, is also uh, a really strong uh, lead guitar throughout the entire song. Um, underneath the vocal layer, uh, there's this uh, the rhythm guitar work, but also this fantastic lead guitar work under the vocals. Um, Akira Takasaki, the guitar player, is a brilliant man. He's great at uh, strong lead rhythm sections, and by that I mean having lead guitar work that works as a rhythm section of the song, not just as a lead in the song. Um, the lead in the in uh, Pandemonium you'll hear in just a moment. I'm going to play a little snippet for you from that as well. Today you get two for one. Takasaki, you know, dances along, kind of gyrating to the rhythm of the song behind the vocals of Minoru Nahara, uh, and so it really does have a great classical feel to it in terms of rock and roll and uh, the heaviness that they're going for here. What's the Truth is a barn burner of a song. This is just easily the heaviest and possibly thrashiest song on the album. Um, has a great football-like chorus, What's the Truth. Um, really good song. So while many albums from Loudness uh, that came out since the reunion, which took place in 2000, uh, and there have been 13 albums just since the reunion. This is a band that's got 27 albums out, uh, and we're talking about their 16th. Um, so they've had 13 albums just since their reunion, eight albums of which were with the original drummer before he passed away, unfortunately, and uh, his name was Munateka Higuchi. And Mr. Higuchi, uh, along with Masayoshi Yamashita on bass, make up the rhythm section, the, the, the backbeat, if you would, to Loudness's musical creations. They are par excellence. Um, Masayoshi Yamashita is not John Entwistle, he's not Getty Lee, but he's damn close, you know, he's really got that ability to move along the fretboard uh, within the rhythms of the songs without being just, you know, a G-string strummer, uh, you know, kind of pathetic bass player. He's really uh, quite the opposite. He's musically uh, extraordinarily talented, and I've always thought that Masayoshi Yamashita's bass lines in loudness 
uh, were a very strong part, along with Akira Takasaki's lead guitar work, at what makes Loudness such a great band. And Pandemonium is the album probably that comes closest to their original uh, sound with, uh, well I shouldn't say their original sound, their five album period of sound where they had Masaya uh, Masaki Yamada on vocals uh, for a period of time. Um, during that period, with the breakup of uh, the original the, the original lineup of Loudness, uh, Akira Takasaki was pretty much an island unto himself uh, as far as Loudness was concerned. And he brought together uh, Masaki Yamada from EZO and the drummer from uh, EZO. And uh, he recorded a few albums while he was discovering Buddhism at the same time in his personal life. Uh, and so his albums during that time were much rawer, much more uh, instrument heavy. Um, a lot of heavy metal music tends to be, you know, with a groove, with a grind, and try to get you into it. <clears throat> but the albums that came out from the Masaki Yamada years, uh, they were really groove-laden, heavy, down-tuned, and so this album, Pandemonium, post-reunion, uh, is the closest thing to that period, so I think it has a special place. It stands out distinctly from a lot of the other albums that they've released. Uh, it's a closest trip, closest thing is a tip of the cap uh, to that period. I have to say I would give uh, Pandemonium probably four and a half out of five stars. I absolutely love the album from beginning to end. I hope the two snippets I played for you uh, are enough to uh, pique your interest and uh, maybe you can give Pandemonium a look for yourself. Uh, it should be available through iTunes. It was originally published in uh, 2001 in Japan um, and only in Japan. Uh, as far as a CD physical release, but uh, it should be available through iTunes or through some music download site. So that's all for today. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and uh, hope you'll give Pandemonium by Loudness a listen. And uh, also please feel free to visit our Patreon page. We welcome your patronage and uh, comment below. That's what those lines are there for. They're waiting for you to fill them up with text. So comment to me and I'll comment back at you. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.